Right. So we are now going to look at the vasodilators as antihypertensive medications. Okay. All right. So the word vaso means what? Blood vessels. Mm. Then a dilator is an opening mm, to dilate mm, or open. Okay. And I've already explained from our previous lesson that the vasodilators are going to help us to open up what? the blood vessel where the narrowing has occurred. The narrowing can be as a result of a spasm or presence of what fat debris that has reduced the lumen of the blood vessel. Okay. So the first group of vasodilators that we are going to look at is hydralazine. So hydralazine is a potent vasodilator that causes dilatation of the blood vessel. And in administration of hydralazine, it is very, very important to dilute hydralazine, especially if it's an IV that you are giving or the IV form that you are giving, because it can cause an abrupt reduction in the blood, vessel, uh, the blood pressure. In that, if you are not careful, you are going to shut down the blood pressure and it might lead to an emergency situation. So usually dilute it and give it what slowly. In the course of giving it slowly, you keep on monitoring the blood pressure until it drops to the level that the doctor has asked to. Now another vasodilator is nitric oxide or nitrate. Anywhere you see nitric or nitrate there, it's an indicator of a vasodilator. So for your exam sake, you shouldn't just look at the nitric. Immediately you see nitric or nitrate there, it's automatic that it's a vasodilator. Examples of medications under that one, we have sodium, sodium nitro side. So when you look at this, the main or the key word in it is the nitro, which helps us to know that it forms under this and it's a vasodilator. Another example is also isosobite dinitrate. I hope most of you have seen these medications or have administered them before. It's usually written as or shortened as ISDN. It's usually in 10 milligrams. Mm. So the key word that you look at is what is the dinitrate, which is an indicator that is false under this and it's a potent vasodilator and that is why they administer it to reduce blood pressure. Now let's look at the third group. Mm. So the third group we have calcium channel blockers. What usually happens here is that calcium is an element okay, that helps in contraction. And to be specific, contraction of what the heart and the blood vessels. Alright, so if you are having a lot of calcium in your heart, what happens? It causes contraction of the heart. And when there is contraction of the heart, or the heart contracts excessively, there is increase in what? Your heart rate, mm -hmm. and we are saying that our cardiac output is equal to what true volume times heart rate. So it means that if there are a lot of uh, calcium in the heart, it will increase the contraction of the heart. Your heart rate increases, your cardiac output increases, which in effect is going to what increase your blood pressure. Then let's look at this place too. Your blood vessels, when there is contraction of your blood vessels, mm, it is going to cause what narrowing. So if the blood vessel was like this. And there's a lot of calcium in it, it's going to cause contraction and it will decrease the lumen. Okay, to this, then the cause of doing that there will be what total or increased total peripheral resistance. And we said if the increased total peripheral resistance is high, it's going to increase what your blood pressure. And someone sat down and made an investigation and realized that then why don't we find the channel through which this calcium passes to enter into either the heart or the blood vessels. So let's assume this to be the blood vessel, okay? So you see there are channels through which the calcium will pass through, okay? So you see calcium will pass through this place, it can also pass through this place, same way, same way like that. Okay, then in the course of doing that, they enter into the blood vessel to cause the contraction. 
so now if you are able to block these channels okay then it means that now you wouldn't have enough calcium within the blood vessel to cause the contraction of the blood vessel so now if there is no contraction of the blood vessel then it means that it's the opposite that will happen which is what dilatation and if dilatation occurs it means total peripheral resistance will reduce then your blood pressure will reduce now if there is a blockage of also calcium entering into the heart then it means the heart is not going to contract what excessively so from cardiac output it was your heart rate is going to reduce because the contraction has reduced so if your heart rate reduces cardiac output reduces then your blood pressure also reduces so basically that is how calcium channel blockers that is how they work examples of calcium channel blockers okay. so now let's look at examples of calcium channel blockers so examples of calcium channel blockers we have what in the Philippines. Okay. So we have what amylodipine. And we have nimodipine. In fact, all the pain pains, but it's not all the pain pains as well. <laughs> that is an indicator for what? But then, what do you call it? The calcium channel blocker. Mm -hmm. So basically, these are the forms of vasodilators that are being given as antihypertensives. There are other forms there, but these are the commonest ones that are usually given in our setting. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can send it through the Abulai page, or after watching it on YouTube, if there are any questions, you can put it down there. Then later on, we will sort you out. Thank you very much.